What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is the hilarious Joel McHale. Joel McHale is well known for hosting The Soup for many years, as well as starring on the NBC sitcom Community. Most recently, he hosted the after party of the smash hit documentary series on Netflix, Tiger King. It's an honor to have him on the podcast today. Don't forget to smack that subscribe button down below. Hit me with a like, and let's jump into it right now with Joel McHale on First Class Fatherhood. Uh, joining me now, First Class Father, Joel McHale. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. That's nice of you to say, which probably means I'm not. <laughs> Let's start right here. How many kids do you have and how old are they? Uh, I have 18 kids and they are all 18. Uh, two kids, 15 and 12, my friend. How about um, you? I got four. I have three boys and then a girl. So um, are you going to continue going here? Are you trying for any more? Or you're all done. No, my wife said I could have some more. It's just she wasn't going to be anywhere near it. And so she, she, was, she was definitely done. What kind of sports or activities are they into? Uh, the 15-year-old, totally uninterested in sports, uh, although he loves Fortnite. And uh, bo both of them love Fortnite, and they communicate with their friends through that, and they play a lot of games with their friends. Uh, I play Fortnite with them sometimes. Um, my other son, the 12 year old does a lot of virtual reality, a lot of VR, uh, and he also loves football and he loves, we just started getting into baseball since COVID hit. Uh, but yeah, my wife and I are sports nuts. So, uh, yes, we have kids that are like, yeah, it's fine. Sports are fine. They're not so, but they're not, I have, I have no kids that are like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working his arm out so he can throw a 102 mile an hour fastball by the time he's 13. Right, yeah, definitely some diehards out there. Yeah, my kids are in, two of them are into the Fortnite pretty big. I just told one to quiet it down while I started to do this interview here. I'm more, of a, I'm more of a modern warfare guy myself. You know, I'm not too much into the Fortnite with them. I'll sit there and rip off a few rounds. Are you good warfare. at modern warfare? Uh, you know what? Uh, three and four, like or two and three, like the the uh, the modern warfare two and modern warfare three. I, I don't really get into the zombies and then as it the games yeah. progressed, I'm still stuck in in that uh, you know that that two player co op that I really enjoyed. So uh, that I'll sit enough. there and play with them. You know, I uh, play with a couple of friends. I do the one versus a hundred, or that we're at squads, and it's it is difficult. Yes. Yeah, it's challenging. Uh, it definitely takes a skill set to uh, to jump the leaderboard there. Uh, listen, Joel, if you could just take a second here to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Oh, I don't know. I lost all that memory last night after the third bottle of wine. Well, uh, as you know, I, I own the UFC and uh, I have made, you know, mixed martial arts very popular. Uh, let's see. No, uh, my name is Brian Shaw and I am... One of the strongest people. No, uh, I am an actor, as they would say, <laughs> and a comedian, I guess. And uh, I, um, yeah, I've uh, I've been here in L.A. Uh, for 20 years. I, I came from Seattle, Washington, go Seahawks. And uh, yeah, it's been I've I've been on a few shows. One called The Soup was kind of the first one that really uh, that stayed around for a while. And then another one called Community and. Boy, I've just, I just I always see myself as like a uh, uh, like a handyman or a journeyman where I just uh, I just kind of collect different jobs to keep the, the thing going. Right now, um, I'm on a show called Star Girl where I play Starman. It's a superhero show, and I have a podcast with Ken Jeong called The Darkest Timeline, and a yeah. movie just that came out called Becky with Kevin James and uh, Lulu Wilson, and uh, and then Twilight Zone comes out this week. Wow, I'm really promoting myself. It's going well. Oh, that's a good thing. You've had uh, an impressive career here, Joel, so far. Now, al along this journey, about how old were you then when you first became a dad, and how did becoming a father kind of change your perspective on life? I became a dad in 2005, and, uh, or 2004, excuse me, 2005, early 2005, uh, January 14th. Uh, and, I, yeah, it changes everything. Uh, as I want to meet the guy that was like, meh, yeah, it was fine. Just, you know, it was a blip. Uh, it changes everything because you. I think you first, you figure out that there's other, you're not really that important. And um, it's all about your children and uh, not screwing them up, hopefully. And it just was the greatest, that, when I ever hear people go like, oh man, you're in for it. When you get that baby, man, you're just in baby jail for a year, man. And I, I was just like, this is the greatest 
thing. I can't believe there is a human being that I love this much. And uh, I just could not stop like holding him and hugging him. And uh, I couldn't believe it. Now he's like 180 pounds. So it's very difficult to do that. Uh, but, uh, but it was, yeah, it was, the, I would say that both of those births were just like, I cannot believe how, how lucky I am. Yeah, very well said. And that's one of the narratives I hate as well. I hate when people say, oh, just wait. You just wait like that warning of it's going to get worse instead of the truth, which it gets better uh, with each and every little milestone. And one of the things, yeah. you know, we worry about, especially when we become dads for the first time, we, we, we worry about our child's progress, crawling, walking, talking. And I know that you um, discovered that y your kids were dyslex dyslexic. Yeah. Uh, at what part of the, what, what age were they when they were actually diagnosed? And what, what age, first of all, what age did you notice something was wrong? And then at what age were they diagnosed? Oh, well, let's see. We had one tested. I think he was seven at the time. And the doctor, it was Eddie, uh, the older one, and the doctor started describing all the symptoms. And I'm like, oh, that's me. That's how I am. And uh, and they said, oh, well, yeah, we were wondering who which one of it was because it comes from it comes through a, a parent. It's passed down. It's definitely not my wife. And uh, and I was like, Oh, and then I, re I was, for whatever reason, I really came to terms with the fact that I was dyslexic in that movement, movement even though I was like in my late thirties or early forties. And so, uh, there's something kind of liberating about that. And dyslexia, you can learn, you learn, how, I mean, you, you learn how to read, you just read slower and you have other strategies for getting through stuff. Uh, you always have it, but you get better at reading, uh, and stuff like that. But um, yeah. So I said to him, I was like, sorry guys. And then my younger one has it as so, yeah. So my poor wife is surrounded by a bunch of dyslexic people, but I like to think of ourselves as a, it's an advantage. So, uh, uh, no, but so I, I, yeah, I, you know, I've obviously everyone has struggled and there's way more things in place now for people with dyslexia. Thank God for audible. I don't know what I would have done without that. Uh, it's, um, that I've I've gone now that Audible was a, an invented I have gone back and read all these books that I've always wanted to read but just never had the time or the patience to get through huge long books so uh so yeah that's my long explanation about it yeah and I, I think it's I, I think you're right it's awesome that there's so many different advantages now uh, for kids to learn and you know number one many kids don't like to read just because reading sucks when you're a kid so it's like yeah. it, you combine that with the uh, um, you, you know, combine that with dys dyslexia and, uh, you know, it can create some problems. Now, what about, uh, what, what are the top values that you're hoping to instill in your kids here, uh, Joel, growing up? Don't be an asshole. Uh, be nice to dry. people. <laughs> yeah. Just don't be a dick. Uh, boy, uh, somebody told me this a long time ago. Uh, it was Moses. No, um, you, when people like, I just want my kids to be happy. Uh, I just want my kids to be successful. I, when I hear that, there's just no way you can ever guarantee that. Uh, and if you're really trying for that, you're going to have a very, you're going to be wildly disappointed. But you can help your kids become good, hopefully. And being good doesn't require happiness or success because uh, those things are ephemeral. And so if I can just raise kids that are good, I'll be very happy and, you know, open a door once in a while for, for mom. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, just, I want to raise kids that are good, that are good people that are going to hopefully not, not make the world shitty. That's my goal. Thank you. Yeah, right on with that, Joel. And what about as far as the discipline goes, what type of discipline are you as a dad? And is it, is it different than the discipline style that you grew up with? Yeah, it's not, my parents, uh, you know, people like to rag on their parents. It's always weird when people talk about how shitty their parents are or how amazing their parents are. There's got to be, a, I was like, they're that amazing? When I was like, you know, my mom is my best friend. I'm like, that doesn't seem, I don't think so, but it doesn't seem, re but anyway, I don't know why I'm being so skeptical. Uh, as far as discipline goes, so my parents did a really, I think my parents did a good job. Uh, and so I kind of, I hopefully have, or, you know, I, I'm using some of their skills, but I've learned a lot. But I, I try not to, uh, when things get ramped up, I like to diffuse 
before they're screaming and that we can, if, if it's something we need to come back and visit later, if there was something going on at a calmer moment, that's when learning can happen instead of, uh, and you know, a yelling moment, um, which, which is the name of my self help book yelling by Joel McHale. No. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so I try to, def- we try to diffuse it before, before it gets too escalated and then take a time later to go, okay, so what, what was going on? And, uh, so that, that's how we kind of do it. I don't have a, uh, I don't have a guidebook that I can recommend. I don't have like, well, uh, I read this book. It's, it's, uh, 40 years old. No, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Scientology probably. That's <laughs> Dianetics. We haven't read Dianetics. Yeah. What about, you know, you're, you're kind of in the same boat. I mean, my oldest is 14. My other one's about to be 13. So uh, I'm kind of right there with the ages that you have with my two older ones. And one of the things that I struggle with is the technology. We talk about Fortnite and video games, but it's like, one of the things I'm concerned about just with them is the pornography that's available online. And yeah. uh, because when I, when I was a kid, you were a kid, it was like one kid had the Playboy magazine. He was the shit in school. Yeah. Like everyone wanted to be around his locker. But now you just tap in the word naked chick and you're going to have 5,000 images and videos. So how do you kind of yeah. monitor or handle or, or talk with your kids uh, about the Internet safety, monitoring that shit and, 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 and pornography and all that? Yeah, well, we have all sorts of filters on all the internet stuff here uh, to the point where, yeah, if you, any word typed in there is not, is going to not allow you to uh, get to that or anybody who's, you know, visiting us or anything like that. And, uh, and I think the conversation has to be very upfront and honest uh, because it's going to it's going to be in their lives somehow, and so it just yeah I think it has to be well established beforehand that uh, this is not real life, and uh, it also can end up damaging relationships if you let this thing take you over. And uh, and not saying that, that 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 I just know folks that they're addicted to it, and uh, it's a real problem. So uh, yeah, it's it is so different than when we grew up that uh, there's a couple of really good books. Uh, one's called, I think it's called Raising Boys. And uh, uh, and it's it's great. And it, that was very helpful. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that, you know, especially with the access that I'm worried about, like kids at school that have the unlocked phone. That's yeah, they do. There's just and they're going to see it. And God forbid they see that uh, two girls, one cup. That'll scar them for life if they see yeah. that one too early. What do you know? tell your kids? Well, I, I try to let them know that it's there. Uh, I, I try to tell them that, you know, have the sex conversation with them about it and then say this is stuff that people are doing basically to get likes, to get money, to get views. And it's yeah. being manipulated. I mean, and I try to tell them that's what it's about and try to avoid it. And, uh, you know, if someone's trying to show it to you, you know, it, it's hard for them to say, oh, I don't want to look at it because what the hell? I mean, you know what I mean? You're yeah. a 14 year old kid. Why wouldn't you? So it's uh, it's just like you said, trying to have the conversation, make them aware of what it is, be transparent, as transparent as I can be. Uh, with them. So, uh, but, but it's a struggle. I'm still searching for the right words to use to discuss the stuff with my children as, as they get more and more into it here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what about as far as you as an actor here, Joel, there's certain particular roles that you won't accept just because you're a dad. Like, does that play any influence on what you'll play as an actor? I don't have like a set of rules. Like you can't do this because like here, here's the, I don't have like a list of roles or a list of um, restrictions. I, I just read the thing that's, that is, comes across my desk and I go, if I'm being offered it or I'm going, or I'm tra- auditioning for it, I go, is this the thing that I would do? And I, it's a case by case basis. And I'm pretty, I know pretty quickly whether it's something I'm going to do or not. And, uh, boy, so, you know, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of, I've done some pretty, extreme roles. Um, and I, but as I read them, I said, this, this part is necessary for this movie because this is the message of the movie or this movie is, is, uh, is, is, uh, uplifting or not uplifting, but kind of like it's, this movie needs to be made and, uh, or I'm, I, so I want to be a part of it. So, so it's case by case. Um, I don't have like a, like a, it's not like going to a restaurant where you're like no peanuts because I'll have a reaction. Uh, but I, yeah, so I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, so like I, I'm in this movie called happily that isn't, hasn't been released and it's about a a husband and wife 
that have a lot of sex and uh, but and people think they're crazy uh, because they're so in love with each other and then people try and stop them. So I was like, oh, that movie is good to because it's putting it's putting out this good uh thing that is like people who are committed to each other want to be together and, and so they're 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 treated as freaks because they always are doing it but uh but so that was one of those movies where i'm like oh yeah this is this eventually my kids will see it they might think it's weird because when they watch are you, are you playing the husband having all the sex yeah yeah wow, that's okay. me well, that's uh, been a fun audition no auditioning it was uh, they offered the role <laughs> uh it's not that graphic it's not okay that, it's it's uh it's really not that graphic um but i'm trying to but oh so like when community when my kids started watching that i'm making out with all sorts of people that are not my wife and <laughs> and then they know some of these people so uh i that is a unique experience for the the children of an actor i think so that's i don't know maybe we'll get them some counseling but uh now they just they think it's they'll just make fun of my acting so that that's good yeah good stuff and what what are you working on now joel i mean you mentioned a project that's coming out you have anyone uh in the pipeline right now what, what kind of goals or plans do you have here for yourself for the future uh let's see i the this show i'm in called star girl just came out on cw and on the dc streaming app uh, and that was created by the great Jeff Johns. And, um, I, I have a small part in it, but I get to play a superhero. So I was thrilled to do it. And I, I, uh, you know, my character is killed in the first five minutes and I, I've, uh, I, I can't say anything else. Uh, but, uh, the twi I'm in an episode of twilight zone coming out. I, uh, I just accepted a movie, but who knows when it's going to start shooting. Um, and uh, I am attached to a show at NBC Studios right now. Uh, but again, we're in this weird uh, moment where you could probably shoot in Australia or New Zealand if they would allow you to come in and, and uh, quarantine. But I don't know. Uh, so I'm all, in the meantime, um, Ken Jong and I have started a podcast called The Darkest Timeline. And uh, that's been really fun and rewarding and cool and great and so I, I, we very much, if we get, if that's the way we perform, which is from our, from he, these corners of the rooms above our garages, then, uh, then great. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I'm in my closet myself here. I made this my little podcast studio here. You do what you got to do, but uh, a lot of people have been available from the whole coronavirus. So I've been benefiting yeah. from that. People have been available, uh, you know, to do these interviews. And I know, I know we're short on time here. Last thing I want to hit you with here, Joel, um, I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for the new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening? Shower your children with love. If you, even if you're a complete idiot or an asshole, if you love your kids, it's going to go a long way. Uh, shower them with love endlessly and that doesn't mean don't discipline that doesn't mean you know you can't it's not but just love them endlessly yeah very well said i love the message there's been a lot of fun for me i gotta say joel McHale, you are a first class father all the way and thank eh. you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on first class fatherhood uh i'll tell i'll be i'll take uh, first class father and c-list actor that that makes me very happy <laughs>